Welcome to another edition of Inside Government. My studio guest today is the team leader of the United Nations Disaster and Coordination Assessment, Mr. Jacques Sain. Jacques, welcome to our Inside Government interview, and I'm taking this opportunity to sit down and talk with us. The few days you've been on the island, or a few weeks actually you've been on the island, there's been training sessions taking place where the government of St. Martin has basically um, have requested assistance in regard to being able to be better prepared for disaster scenarios and doing so in a very quick, compact, and a concise manner. The training has been coordinated with the Disaster Coordination um, Office that is headed by Mr. Clive Richardson, and these exercises have been taking place. First of all, once again, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about this particular um, background with regard to this session. What has been um, asked of you from the government of St. Martin? Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, based on uh, the request of the government and negotiation that has been taken place months before with the United Nations resident coordinator, that is the representative of the United Nations in the region here, we agree to support the government with uh, what we call the disaster hurricane preparedness mission. And that mission consists of uh, in close cooperation with the government, with, uh, with the government staff, with non-governmental organizations, private uh, companies, also military, uh, to uh, survey, to invest, uh, to, to see what uh, preparedness uh, activities could be taken that could be implemented on short term. And that is what we, uh, that is what we did. We looked into the disaster management organization we also uh, showed what international organizations could do. Uh, the Office of Coordination and Humanitarian Affairs, our team, but also other organizations, how we can support uh, St. Martin's uh, government uh, uh, disaster management structure. It was also known, because I was here last year at Irma, at a devastating situation for the community here, that collecting information, uh, analyzing information, and use it for, uh, to express the needs for the population, that that was still a lessons learned a challenge. So we also support the government. How can you improve that? How can we, uh, can we improve that by mapping, by, by collecting information, but also conducting assessments? Logistics was another uh, 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 important aspect. <laughs> If you have needs to be addressed for the for the for the co uh, community, it means that you have to know how you uh, organize that. So th those were the topics where we have to focus on. And you, uh, in your first, uh, um, you you mentioned we are here for the training. That is only one part of what we did. So the important thing is short recommendations. What can be used at this moment for uh, the government officials and disaster management organization. And we conducted two workshops, one on information management, and the second one was emergency lo logistics. Now, information management, explain that to us in regard to more of an internal aspect of information. How does that work when you're looking at the information management section? In, 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 in a very simple words, at this moment, we know how many people are living in St. Martin, in the eight administrative dis districts. Mm -hmm what the vulnerability is of the people, how many children that there are living, what schools do we have, what, what type of other buildings they are. That is existing information. If you have a situation like Irma, you have to assess as soon as possible what's happening there and to identify the gaps based on the needs. And that is how you collect the information, analyze the information to address the needs for the community. For instance, does people need food? Does people need to go to shelters? Do, does people need help and how? All those aspects play a role in what you call information management. Now coming out of the exercise and the key stakeholders that were involved, you mentioned a few of them. Was that all of them that were a part of this exercise? Who were the key stakeholders that were a part of this exercise with uh, UNDAC uh, in this particular last two-week period? Well, um, 
we work here in St. Martin with the government that has a structure of emergency support functions. Emergency support functions are groups of experts on different topics. For instance, water and electricity, but also uh, about a mass care of the population, uh, health, uh, food, and so on. The representatives of those expert groups called emergency support functions were there at those workshops based on the fact that they need that information, for instance, or they're responsible for the logistics. Those were the, uh, the actors. But we also work with volunteer groups, with, we call it NGOs, non-governmental organizations. And we saw some beautiful things here. From the lessons learned from Irma, we saw an engagement of volunteer organizations that are directly in contact with the community that can make the difference together with the government uh, to address the needs. So they were also uh, attending those uh, workshops uh, together with those government staff that, uh, that, that are responsible to, uh, to, to work out the plans and implement it. Many people were homeless or didn't have uh, any facilities anymore. There was no electricity. So if you talk about logistics, then it is important to move very fast, to make sure that you have enough resources to support the people directly. When disaster strikes, it affects all of us. Yeah, girls, tell the son to come and see me. I'll put her name at the top of the list. You need to know that as a citizen, your rights are always Please. protected. I just need help. Here, fill those out. I have filled out this form three times already. I need help. This is just a waste of time. If you feel your rights have been violated or have a legitimate complaint against any government body, even in these troubling times, <laughs> we are here to listen to and act upon your concerns. The Ombudsman will use all of its resources to seek a fair resolution, keeping the government fully accountable. The Ombudsman, protecting your rights. Brought to you by the International Ombudsman Institute. Hi, what's up, St. Martin? My name is Rene Leverett, and I play baseball. And I've represented St. Martin in numerous international tournaments and professionally around the world. Sports matters to me because it reveals and develops character. So I challenge the business community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facilities. I also ask the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take the challenge and step up for sports. Because hashtag sports matters, hashtag are you in. One of the other key areas that you focused on um, dealing with emergency logistics, as you had mentioned, um, can you get a little more detail concerning the emergency logistics aspect that were uh, unique or key to St. Martin? Well, um, back to Irma again. Um, when Irma hit St. Martin, the airport was completely devastated. Airplanes uh, were topped over. The whole terminal was, uh, was being destroyed or partly destroyed. The harbor was destroyed. But still, the population was suffering. Many people were homeless or didn't have uh, any facilities anymore. There was no electricity. So if you talk about logistics, then it is important to move very fast to make sure that you have enough resources to support the people directly in food, uh, hygiene kits, water, because the water was being uh, uh, disconnected as well. Mm -hmm. And those aspects were coming in at the airport. But if you don't know what the really immediate needs are, you might get in a constraint with your logistic cha uh, chain and use those assets, what you need for the, for the most needed, in the wrong way. Right. So if you have organized your logistics better, based on good information, you can be uh, more effective for the real people in need. When you're looking at um, geography, the size of the area that you're dealing with, 
um, when you're looking at St. Martin through your profession, how, how do you gauge that in regard to emergency situations? Um, is every scenario of a disaster challenging? Of course it is. But is it easier to manage in smaller geographic spaces? How do you view it? No, I will not say that it is more easy. Um, the opportunity uh, St. Martin has is that it is a beautiful island uh, and the neighbor is St. Martin. That is one. And uh, the big airport has been shared by those two countries. Two, if you look to the figures of 2016, 1.5 million people arrived at the airport as a tourist or a visitor for St. Martin. 1.6 million people arrived on cruise ships into St. Martin. Mm -hmm. When we arrived, we had thousands and thousands of tourists in St. Martin. So that also means that you have, as a government, but also as the supporting organization when I was coming in, had a responsibility for those tourists as well. So looking to the challenges a small island has is infrastructure is hampering because uh, a, a lot of a lot of debris all over uh, the, the 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 energy infrastructure water electricity was not working and there were population was in need and uh, the, the the tourist was in a devastating situation so you had you had many steps to go at the same time that needs to be well coordinated an example that i can give you is the 62 dialyzed patients that were on the island and couldn't be treated in the St. Martin's uh, 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 hospital. Medical center. Ma Correct. Medical center. Mm -hmm. and, and at that time, you have to react swift. So I don't want to say that it is easier on a small island. No, you have more challenges. But if you know what you're talking about, you can move uh, quick. Coordination, partnerships, considering the geographic um, limitations and, of course, resources. Uh, how do you view that in regard to um, regional partnership? Is there an opportunity there for us? Oh, yeah. There is a big opportunity. I mean, the small island states uh, could, uh, have, have, have the same challenges mm -hmm. sometimes. So share those uh, challenges. Share the lessons learned together. Create pr platforms. Use international organizations as a partner to support, not to take over, no, to support and to make sure that you can strengthen the, 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 the support you need. And that is, that is a huge opportunity. At this moment, we have, uh, as, as you know, six islands that is under the umbrella of the Dutch government. Uh, three uh, uh, constituent states, uh, including St. Martin, and three cities of the Netherlands. You can team up, start seeing what are the challenges of those islands. But we have also other islands who are neighbors of us. So you can use the, those different platforms together with the uh, uh, international organizations will give a lot of opportunities how you can uh, deal with all the challenges you have in, uh, in St. Martin. Expected outcomes coming from this exercise. What has been discovered? Well, one has been discovered that uh, we showed that there are more partners as, as, as uh, the St. Martin colleagues knew. There are more partners with knowledge that you can use to support. That's important. Second important thing is also, if I don't know you, I don't know what your opportunities are. So start meeting each other on regular basis. See what uh, strengths others have. For instance, you talked about the trainings we gave. There are more opportunities in the region where you can do that together. For instance, there is a beautiful early warning system in Barbados. Hey, there is a beautiful early warning system in Curaçao. How can we benefit from it? Not to copy it, because St. Martin is unique uh, uh, as an island. No, to see which opportunities can you use. And that is the strength you can use. All the countries who delivers uh, uh, an UNDAC member, a United Nations Disaster Assessment Coordination member, will pay for it. So that means that we are here without any cost. We come with our knowledge and we share the knowledge together with the partners in St. Martin.
Hello, Martin. My name is Jose Helga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sports because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSM Facebook page for more information. Hashtag Sport Matter, hashtag are you in? When disaster strikes, it affects all of us. Yeah, girl, tell the son to come and see me. I'll put her name at the top of the list. You need to know that as a citizen, your rights are always Please, protected. I just need help. Here, fill those out. I have filled out this form three times already. I need help. This is just a waste of time. If you feel your rights have been violated or have a legitimate complaint against any government body, even in these troubling times, <laughs> we are here to listen to and act upon your concerns. The Ombudsman will use all of its resources to seek a fair resolution, keeping the government fully accountable. The Ombudsman, protecting your rights. Brought to you by the International Ombudsman Institute. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Women's Soccer Team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag Sports Matter. Hashtag Are You In? Well, one of the things that I, we've all been experiencing, and um, it seems almost like a, a crutch. It's, it's very real, but at the same time, you don't want to use it as a crutch going forward to ensure that you strengthen yourself and become more resilient. Uh, financial constraints. Looking at it through your organization, is there a way to be able to work around that as effectively as possible so that you cannot make your budget limitations a, a reason for not being able to be at the level um, that you should be when it comes to disaster preparedness? Well, um, first, uh, I, we have to say that we are here and there is no budget constraint because uh, all the countries who delivers uh, uh, an UNDAC member, a United Nations Disaster Assessment mm -hmm. Coordination member, will pay for it. So that means that we are here without any cost. We come with our knowledge and we share the knowledge together with the partners in St. Martin. So that is important. If we have an emergency, it doesn't cost St. Martin anything because we are coming under the same conditions. Then programming. At this moment, you have two programs, and maybe you have more programs, but at least two programs. That is the National Recovery and Resilience Plan based on the Trust Fund. The Parliament accepted that the 27th of August. And we have what we call the VNG Plan. The VNG Plan to look into the legislation, how you can have improvement. That has a longer timeline. Those are covered. But you also have opportunities like uh, uh, the United Nations Development Program, which is busy in St. Martin to support UNICEF with the children, uh, uh, education. So I don't think, with all due respect, of course, everything people uh, or organizations do will cost money, but budget constraints cannot be the topic that you say we cannot do that because there are more opportunities. The time frame now that you are looking at in order to accomplish or have St. Martin be able to accomplish what they've learned. What are we looking at? What is the end result now going forward uh, for St. Martin, especially coming out of these exercises? Well, there are two observations from my side. Uh, they are very serious with the lessons learned. Uh, every staff member within the department uh, dealing with disaster management 
is really aware of what they have learned from Irma. Because Lewis, I was involved in Lewis as well, was a long time ago, 1995. Irma was a huge wake-up call. A young country that became a, a constituent state 10-10-2010 now have been faced a dreadful disaster. That is one. So they're very aware on that. But on top of that, they're really engaged uh, uh, to try to uh, improve their plans and procedures, but also are eager to hear from others who has experience, how would you do it? How can we tweak that? How can we improve that? So that is, that is, that is my second observation. My third observation is that we also have to be aware that those government staff does an, uh, an incredible job. One, they have to keep up their own activities, their own work. That is flowing all over, you know, uh, all, all those staff members. And besides of that, they have to prepare for disaster preparedness with all the new plans. And that is something that is uh, important that we pay attention on that, that they will be strengthened in the capacity within the government with good people. UN DAC team leader St. Martin, Mr. Jacques Shane, thank you so much for being a part of our Inside Government interview. Uh, final words. Um, speci specifically, I wanted to ask you, um, what would you say to the citizens and their role? Because we look at it from the role internally, but what can a citizen do to be able to uh, be better prepared? What would your words of expression Just be? Just one word. No, well, uh, one sentence, sorry. Is trust the government. You have great leaders in your country who is now on top of making it much better. Have patience. I know patience is, 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 is not always in us, not also in me. Be patient. I see good improvement and uh, I see good leadership. And that means that uh, that is important that the community will see it. And also try to be active in community involvement because you as a community can make the difference when you team up together. Thank you very much, Mr. Sain. And to our radio listeners and televiewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this special edition of Inside Government. If you missed our broadcast, be sure to tune in to the official government website, stmartingov.org. Also tune in to St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9 FM. On behalf of the team here at the Department of Communication, I'm Cedric Peterson. Thanks for tuning in.